Hey, Jim, I recently watched Bipolar Rock and Roller, a documentary on Mauro Ranallo. Did you ever have any interactions with Mauro in his early days in Canada? What is your opinion of his work? Not just his work in wrestling, but his work in MMA and especially boxing. Uh, well, no, I didn't have any uh, interactions with him at that far back when he was still in Canada, but actually he was on the show, The Experience, here, uh, well, probably a couple of years ago. It, it was right before you, back in the dark ages. Um, and and I've I've been a fan of not only of his wrestling work, but also, uh, you know, the MMA stuff. And I mean, he's got a great voice. He's so excited. I, I've and it, I've heard a couple people say, ah, but he gets too excited and stays there too long. And I used to do the same thing when I was announcing because I was really excited. I think he is too. So I, I give him that. Um. Uh, the the thing where when he left WWE when he was doing he was doing SmackDown right not Raw but SmackDown and he left and the, supposedly it was Bradshaw everybody I like Bradshaw too we've always gotten along and I couldn't understand what the whole uh, hoo ha was about that could that had to get that far and go that far that couldn't be spoken about uh, but uh, that's no, not anything negative on Morrow either. Uh, so I like his work, and when he was on the show, and several times I've talked to him, I think he's been a great guy. Um, I was, I didn't uh, fully know how miserable that he had been for a, a long periods of time until watching because I saw the the show here just recently also, and I just you know I don't know what to say because I hate you know. It, for a guy to be, I, I think the whole thing comes down to him not realizing how good he was at something and feeling fucking horrible about it is the is the one sentence takeaway that I got of the whole thing that he's never had a grip on his own self worth and is always beating himself up or feeling down. Anyway, you know, I I think he's always done a great job with what he's done, and and he's a he, he's been a nice guy to me, and I hope that uh, and I think he enjoys doing NXT now, and I probably would too quite a bit more because it's a lot less pressure, and I admire a, a preparation freak like that because it it's obvious that he's OCD with his preparation, which is you know a way to get on my good side. If I was him and, or if I was me or if I was anybody else, I would have, I would have not gone topless as much in the documentary, but I don't know under what <laughs> conditions, uh, that they was being filmed. But, but here's the thing. Did you see what Meltzer? And this is one thing now I've spent the past several weeks trying to campaign for Dave Meltzer's credibility. And I have to call it into question here, I, but, I, but I don't know where this story came from. Meltzer said, and and I and I don't want him to reveal any of his sources. We don't want to have to take him to court to fucking you know do this, but that he was told that somehow Morrow in the late eighties when he was doing the the manager thing in Vancouver and was still a teenager was talking to WCW about coming in as my cousin. I saw that Bobby or something yeah. for my younger cousin. It never got as far as anybody talking to me about it. And, but now here's the thing. It may very well be possible because if it was that point where George Scott was fucking booking, right. And we had already quit because we said, we're not going to fucking work for this guy. So we're finishing up. Do you think would he have tried to call somebody <laughs> and said, Hey, we'll bring in his fucking cousin. <laughs> cause, cause I'm thinking that cause anybody else that was in the booking in charge of booking during that entire time period, including I was on the booking committee at one point during that time period, anybody else, Jim Ross or Kevin Sullivan or Ric Flair, or any, or whoever would have told me about that. And that, and I never heard that. So I'm wondering if that fucking Weasley George Scott was trying to bring in my fucking cousin. <laughs> 